In this day and age, running a restaurant has never been harder. Tonight, I'm going to show you what happened to some of the restaurants we tried to turn around last year. But first, let's take a look back at what happened when I arrived at Classic American. West Babylon, New York, just an hour outside Manhattan. It's a cute, stunning, all-American town. The perfect location for a classic American diner. Just not this one. So tonight sucked. Every night sucks, yeah. The owners, Colleen and Naomi, were $700,000 in debt, and not one of them had paid themselves a paycheck in over a year. I feel like I've failed. And I've tried hard, you know? Colleen's son, Kevin, was the head chef. What's soft and chewy? The calamari. People eating their food, they've been waiting so long. She knows everyone's waiting a long time, OK? And her boyfriend, Dom, was the manager. Hey, Dom, why we run out of everything? Out of fucking wine up. When I arrived, the menu was simple. So I played it safe and stuck to the classics. I'm a big lover of mac and cheese. Do you have any mac and cheese? Yes. Almost impossible to screw up. Yeah, it's a mouthful of goo. That's gross. Almost impossible to screw up. <sighs> the bomb burger? Fucking hell. You probably won't like that either. It's chewy as hell. We ask the chef for the taste, though. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. You're great. My appetite gone. I went straight back in the kitchen to confront Kevin, the chef. On a scale of one to ten, rate the food in the restaurant. Between six and seven. Six and seven. I would have said six. Half it, and take two away, and you you're on my mark. At that nice dinner service. I witnessed firsthand the real issues with classic American. Water up. Bad food. Just kind of sad. The shrimp is no good. Not enough food. Teresa, no burgers. We're out. There is no more. What a joke. I gotta. I can't do this tonight. I can't. You gotta go fucking work the line because I'm fucking losing my mind. What's the matter? I'm scared. I'm really, really scared. You understand? I do understand, and I can see how painful it is. I feel like I had more loot than anybody else in this place. Excuse me. Here's the, the honest truth. Friendship's got fuck all to do with it, because there's no friends when that place is closed. You're right. You're absolutely right. You cannot give up. No. Colleen was wearing all the pressure of Classic America on her face, and you could see she was on the verge of a nervous breakdown. The next morning, I sat everybody down, and I held a staff meeting. Dom, why are we always running out of product? Because when I open my fucking mouth, everybody shrugs their shoulders and gets a fucking attitude. Because you do it That's all the time. Why. This is the problem. Is it you? Is it him? Is it me? Is it her? Who? Who? It's everybody. No! I was ready to kill somebody. You don't disrespect me like that. They got to find a way to fucking piss me off. No. Unbelievable. Nothing was working. So, to add some excitement for that night's service, I introduced a new special. Let's start off with some sliders. Fun and bite size, yeah? That is a 1,000 miles away from the bomb burger. Yeah? Have a taste. Ooh, that's good. How's that? Perfect. Try and chew it before you swallow it, yes? You mean you swallow it right out? Finally, Classic American had a dish customers actually enjoyed. Oh, that's good. good. It's really good. Yeah. They said it was excellent. Unfortunately, the rest of the old standbys were a classic American flop. Look at that. Just touch it. A plate oh. of vegetables. Your finger's going right through it. This is the sorry state that we've got ourselves into. I wouldn't serve that to my dog. Stop. Stop. Don't send anything else. Close it. We're closed. He's a closed? Can I get a waitress over here? I'm sorry, we're not serving anymore. I was running out of time. Nothing was working. There's no way this restaurant can survive unless there's a dramatic change. So that night, my team moved in and gave Classic American a stunning, and I mean stunning, makeover. Wow. Come in, come in. <laughs> Gone as the old country style, whatever it was. And welcome to the new Classic American. <laughs> Talk to me, darling. <laughs> Are you happy? What do you think? Looks great. Let's have a look at the new menu. Classic American dishes done brilliantly well. <laughs> I 
swear to God, who needs a pig in the back garden when you've got fucking Dom? Big deep breath. <laughs> oh, great. Right. Dom, save some for the staff, will you please, yeah? Uh-huh. And then, the breakthrough I've been waiting for. Somewhere along the line, we got lost. And I just want to apologize for that. Colleen finally took charge of her business. We're family, but we have a business to run, OK? And so those two things need to be separated. And I know you have to lead by example. And we will show you the leadership that you need to do your job. Hallelujah! Let's have some fun tonight, guys. You know it. Relaunch night. Opening five minutes, guys, yes? Can we be ready? Ready. With Colleen stepping in and taking charge. Pulled pork right away. Let's go. The kitchen ran smoothly. Kevin, you got a classic burger. OK. Two orders of wings all day. You got the wings, yeah? Excellent. Nice. Keep it going, guys. How do we like everything? Well, absolutely delicious. We'll come back for more. <laughs> well, we'll take it. Yeah, we'll, we'll take the board. The customers are happy. Good night. Thank you very much. That night's relaunch was one of the best we've ever done. You all pulled off a fantastic service. Congratulations. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Colleen, Naomi, this restaurant has every potential to really become a huge success. Do not start dropping your standard. It means too much. Yes. Come here, you. Well done. Up. Whoa, well done. Mm. I'm back at classic American West Babylon, New York, where two waitresses bought a business to fulfill their American dream. It turned out to be an American nightmare. We made a lot of changes. We're about to find out if they turn things around. Up next, find out if Colleen and Naomi have taken charge. Or is classic American sliding back to its old ways? Who's buying the ingredients now? No. Oh, Jesus. Last time I was at Classic American, I met two owners that were on their last legs. The food was disgusting, the staff were disorganized, and the restaurant was bleeding money. We made a lot of changes, new decor, new menu, and a new attitude. I'm back now to see if all those changes have paid off. Fingers crossed. Hello, hello, hello. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Very good, thank you. I can't believe how well you look. <laughs> look, you've just been away on holiday. Yeah. Where did you go? Nowhere. No? It's a little weight off the shoulders. A little weight off the shoulders. Um, no need to ask, but obviously business today is busy. It's been very busy. Oh, really? Yes. You get Fantastic. a good crowd, lunch and dinner. Who's in charge? Out here, Colleen's in charge. In the back of the house, it's me and me. Synergy there? Yes. Fantastic. Um, I'm going to jump in the kitchen. You've got the reins. You're in control. Right. I'm more relaxed. There's more structure again. And the business is growing. Hello? Somebody's busy. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? <laughs> good to see you. Are you well? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, goodness me. You look great. Thank you. you so does your partner. I was super excited to see Gordon come back. I was nervous, but I was really happy, and I knew it was only going to be positive. Who's in control? We're in control. control. You are. That's good news. Battle, yeah. battle scars. Approved. Battle scars. <laughs> Fantastic. Who's involved with the menu? Uh, Kevin, myself, Colleen. Big time. Hey, big boy. How are you? Good, how's it going? Good to see you. Want to grab an apron? Uh, an apron? <laughs> oh, good. Someone's found his balls. Excuse me, you want me to cook now? Yes. <laughs> Is that passion still there? Absolutely. More, oh. more so. Rate the food out of 10. What would you give it? Between six and seven. Half it. And take two away, and you, you're on my mark. 10. A 10? Yes, sir. You didn't even think about that. Brilliant news. Yeah. Hey, it's good to see you. You too. The business is up in terms of the last six months. Where is it? Uh, 35%. 35% up. That's fantastic. Are the costs in control? Yes. They are, yeah? And who's buying the ingredients now? Who's, who's running that side? Dom. Dom. Oh, Jesus. You always got to come back? That's right. I got to fucking comment about every fucking thing. Because when I open my fucking mouth, everybody shrugs their shoulders and gets a fucking attitude. Because you do it That's all the time. Why. We kept him out of the kitchen. You kept him out of the kitchen. That's good news. Out of his office. Oh, Dom's got an office. <laughs> oh, wow. The garage. Oh, the garage. Good. He's allowed to be in for an hour a day to eat and have coffee. That's it. How are you? Hey, good. How you doing? Very well, thank you. How are you? Good, good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> Likewise. I, I thought I'd see you running around the dining room, topping up water, shouting at everybody. No, I'm, I'm a little in the background now. 
How do the staff rate you now? Do they see you as an interferer? Oh, still an interferer. Uh -huh. Yeah. What, well, you mean you're still throwing things? They gotta find a way to fucking piss me off. No, I don't throw things. I just scream now. Oh, you scream now? Yeah, I'm yelling at everybody. That's why I stay out here. OK, OK. Colleen looks great, by the way. I mean, seriously. You know, the stress, a lot of stress is relieved. She looks 10 years younger. Colleen's a lot happier. The changes she's made in the last year, things are looking up. Good to see you. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, he hasn't changed one bit, has he? No. Oh, oh, my God. Listen, it's still good to have someone that passionate behind you and the business. But there's a place for him. And it's not in the restaurant. No. It's in the shed. Yes. He's very high strung down. But he's got my best interest at heart. I'm sat here looking at both of you now, and completely different to the last time I saw you both. <laughs> <laughs> last time round, you sort of hadn't given up, but you were just going through the motions. Yeah. I got embarrassed the way you were letting the dining room staff get away with murder. Do you want to go out there or no? I don't know. How's their attitude changed towards both of you? They're not as confused anymore or frustrated. Right. They're more happier and more willing to do yeah. what needs to be done. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Thank you much indeed. That meatloaf. Jeez, that looks lovely. Uh, doesn't it? It does. Wow. That is delicious. A plus? Yeah, that's an A double plus. A 10 out of 10. Uh, I'd give that a 10 and a half out of 10. <laughs> so last time I was here, the worst moment. Colleen, what was it? The garage. I've been fighting a losing battle every day. In terms of just feeling totally helpless, mm -hmm. almost given up, mm -hmm. knowing that I couldn't, but wanting to. Mm -hmm. Naomi, worst moment for you as well. Yeah, after people ordered, um, we shut the kitchen down. Stop! Don't send anything else. Close it. Now, I, I would like to tell you something. Yeah, of course. And that if I cry, it's happy. <laughs> All right. Yes. All right. I just want to tell you that. I appreciate it. Come and tell us. Had you not come, we wouldn't be sitting here. It wasn't me who turned this place around. It was both of you. Never forget that. Had he not come, we, we would have had a shot on doors. He gave us a second chance, you know? Um, he brought us back to life. Um, I've got a little surprise for you both. Please come with me. I know. Just two seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, can I just have your attention for 30 seconds? Uh, I'm so happy to be back here in West Babylon. Uh, why? Because I think this place is amazing. And there's a gentleman here who has an amazing award. Um, would you say good morning to Richard Francis Storm, please? <laughs> oh, it's, uh, good to see you. On behalf of all the hamburger lovers of Long Island, uh, Good Times Magazine's Bountiful Gourmet column would like to present you with Long Island's best burger wow. award. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Amazing. Thank you. Great news. Thank you. The biggest thing that Gordon taught me was to be the boss and stop letting everybody walk all over me. Thank you to our community and our employees for making this possible. If Chef Gordon Ramsay hadn't come, we wouldn't be here. Our doors would have closed a year ago. Well done. The most important thing that I got from him is that you have to believe in yourself. You know, you can do this. You know, you did do it. You can do it again. I'm so happy for Colleen and Naomi. Increasing business by 35%. In today's economy, that's practically unheard of. They are a true, classic, American success story. Brilliant. Boston's historic North End is rich in history, culture, and brilliant food. There are so many thriving Italian restaurants in the area. Unfortunately, Davide is not one of them. Hey, moron, this is your table. Get the fuck out of here, really. The restaurant was owned by two brothers who were constantly at war with each other. Too fucking hot for him. Get the fuck out. Don't waste my time. Frank was the chef, bitter and frustrated. Shut the fuck up. Take the food that's up in the window and come back. Worst of all, he'd given up on himself. It's 3.30, you gotta get ready for dinner. It's different, you're gonna get fucked anyways tonight. Frank's brother Anthony just looked so down and beat and constantly trying to please. Anthony, why don't you go kill yourself? Oh my God, can't work like this. To make matters worse, the brothers were hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. Are we gonna be able to take checks this week? The moment I arrived, I called the staff together and that's when I discovered 
the problems ran far deeper than I ever imagined. Anthony has been in and out of the restaurant over the 13 years. Frank found out that Anthony was embezzling money. And what happened? I know, I'm hooked on painkillers, got in trouble, went to jail, the whole nine yards. Frankie got left with the whole shit. It got to him. Got depressed, he got burnt out. Money went down every year. Naturally. When Anthony left, Frank gave up. He's broken mentally and physically. Come on, I'm mad, I'm pissed. I'll fucking tell you to go fuck yourself for the bullshit you put me through. Oh my God, Frank, if you can't put the past behind you, we can't go on. He doesn't respect me, and I don't respect him because I think he laid down and fucking died. The family were very open and honest about their feelings, but when it came to the food tasting... All the passes he made, that's a big positive. All I got was a bunch of BS. This is really spongy and horrible. Are they frozen? No, no, that's fresh. We just check if that was done this morning because it tastes like it was done last sure. week. When were they made? Uh, no. three weeks ago. Yeah, there's a batch of freezer. They don't make them to autumn every day. It was actually made three weeks ago. Disappointed by the food, I went straight in the kitchen and gave Frank a reality check. If you can't even be bothered to cook fresh food, what do you want me to do? Wave a magic wand and turn this place around? Come on! I don't know how to do any better. That's all right. You could do much better. That night, I was hoping for a reinvigorated Frank. Bat chance. What are you down there, little booth? I'm thinking, come on. You can sit down on your ass to think. My seat of depression. Holy crap. From the first ticket, dinner service, was a disaster. Table 31, been waiting an hour. Please shut the fuck up! I'm waiting on 32. Can't cook that fast. This is lukewarm. Yes, son of a fucking bitch. You and your fucking lemon juice, fucking stupid chicken out of your fucking motherfucker. I wasn't watching a dinner service. I was watching a man on the verge of an emotional breakdown. <laughs> it wasn't over yet. Frank walked out of his own dinner service. Are you kidding me? I'm not fucking cooking. I'm not doing it. Davide was doomed, unless we can bring Frank back. The next morning, a very emotional Anthony spoke the words that his brother was dying to hear for so long. I know how much damage I've done. And you had to hold it together. Now I believe you need to take care of yourself. We don't ever say it, but I do love you. That's it. That's the first time I heard any remorse from him. Should I listen or should I not listen? Oh. Kim? You haven't put this chef's jacket on in four years. Because I think inside you felt you didn't deserve it anymore. But you do. You're actually one of the most talented people I've ever met in my life. That lack of passion that showed in the food yesterday for Gordon was a cry for help. Please put this back on. No, I'm serious. Frank was beginning to come around, which was very positive. I want you to think of something that you want to cook. Pan sear this in a simple lemon cake with white wine. Nice. What have you got in the sauce? Shallots, thyme, a little dash of rosemary. It's delicious. He even put his chef jacket on. And now you look like it's the chef that you are. Then I got to work on the new menu immediately. Have a look at this. Wow. Oh, my God. Gone are the dreadful plates of the 80s. <laughs> the main course, homemade gnocchi, ground butter, truffle oil, and some fresh chives at the end. Awesome. I am overwhelmed. Relaunch night. You welcome to Davide. Tonight we change the menu. The stakes were really high. A packed house and two writers from Boston Magazine. I'll do the Tuscan bread soup. Within minutes, Anthony and Frank reverted back to their old ways. Frank, look, I got the pork like a complete. That's it. Don't ever rush me. Come on, give me, give me. I'll put it up when it's ready. Give me. Go. The pork is a little raw. Table 15, want the pork for? Fuck! It's from Boston Magazine. Oh, no. My God, we're so fucked. Frank looked ready to bolt out the back door again. I stepped in immediately and really turned him around. Listen, we can pull this back. We can pull it back. Come on. OK? I know it's undercooked. We can get it going, yeah? I'm fucking pissed Come on. You know, you can't let it follow. No, no, no. destroyed. I'm not giving up. I'm tired, but I'm not giving up. Thank God I was trying to impress you tonight. Thank you. Make sure it's good. It's good. 
It was rocky, but Frank and Anthony proved they could work as a team and work under pressure. Every man where Frank can be, every be night. Frank, you proved to me tonight that you can run a kitchen. And Frank, keep that chef jacket on, keep that attitude with it, and never sit down in a kitchen ever again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rooting for your success. I'm back at Davide's in Boston's North End. Last time I was here, it was like walking to a war zone. Two brothers feuding so much they were destroying their business. We brought them back together as a team, and we're about to find out if they're still on the rock. Last time I was at Davide, the food was rotten and the customers were staying away. But nothing was going to change until I helped the two brothers who owned the restaurant to let go of the past. Let's hope they haven't gone back to their old fighting ways. Anthony? How are you, sir? How have you been since I last saw you? I'm good. Uh -huh. good. You look great. Yeah, things are good. It was definitely a little nervous having him come back in. He's still worried, is he going to come back and say, you guys, I'm doing the right thing again? Um, nice atmosphere in here. There's a buzz. Big Brother, where is he? He's in the kitchen. Please tell me one thing. Has Frank kept his butt off that chair? We go down there, little booth. Come on. My seat of depression. You ask him. OK, I'm going to find out. Good to see you. Man. All right, you too. Nice to Thank see you. you. Pick up. Hey. How are you, big man? Good. Right. You look good. You're busy out there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got the chef jacket on. Please tell me you continue to wear that. Yeah. Yeah? Oh, no, come on, Frank. What is that doing here? You little fucker. <laughs> I gotta rest my ass for once in a while. Oh no, come on, Frank. No, you're kidding me. Before service, after service? Before and after. Not in the middle of service. No. Promise? Yeah, but can't anymore. Have you kept that passion? Yeah. Good. Hard, well, it was right? It's always there. It just needed a little bit of push, I guess. The biggest thing I learned from Chef Ramsay was that you gotta care about what you're doing. Bottom line, if you don't wanna do it, get out. Hello, Kim. <laughs> come round, darling. Oh my God. I was excited to see him because I wanted him to see that Frank had really taken his suggestions and implemented them. All right, nice to see you. It's nice to see you. Uh, last time I was here, you were at your wit's end. Yeah. The weight on your shoulders. I mean, you were on the verge of breaking down before anybody. I love him, and I've seen how much over the years he's done for everyone. How's so their relationship between Anthony and Frank? I mean, they're brothers, so yeah. they're going to fight. You, you look at it as Frank has one way and Anthony has another. Yeah. I think Gordon bringing a lot of the issues to life did help in that, you know, Frank and Anthony kind of understand now where the other one's coming from. I look at you now, not mm -hmm. just how happy you look, but great to see Frank sweating, busy, on top of it. I know. That's the scary Amazing. Thing. How cool was that? To see him happy about it and to be researching new dishes and looking for new menu things to bring in is amazing. Good. Because that was gone. That's great news. He's got his passion back. You've got your man back. Yes. <laughs> right, lunch. What are we eating? I'm not sure. Yeah? I don't know. Frank. Yes. Whoa. Yeah. Honest. That's lovely. When I look at these three dishes here and I think back to what was served, seriously, I mean, it's a different league. Look at that. Mmm. Uh, mmm. When Ramsay tasted the food, I was thinking, here we go again. That's delicious. It's really good, Lee. Really good. He liked it. He didn't read me a new one. <laughs> Brotherly love on a one to ten. Where's that now? Too fucking hot water. Get the fuck out. Don't waste my time. It's had it too sucks, but it's had it too sucks. We're at a seven. We'll get a seven. Since the last visit, me and Frank have definitely made progress and let go of more stuff than before. If you blow up five times a week, now we're blowing up twice a week. Go on, where are we? On a good day. On a good day. On a good day, yeah. seven. I was seven on a good day. <laughs> seven on a real good day. <laughs> I feel like I moved forward a little bit because I think he has more respect for what I do. He finally gets it a little bit. Business in general, since it was last year. 10, 15 percent off. Oh, wow. Very well. Good. Well, have you seen what's happened in Boston in terms of how many restaurants have been closing over the last four months? I mean, yeah, surviving fun. this recession is, is a success. Let me tell you that. 
if you weren't here, we would have been closed. You think so? Yeah. Yeah, guaranteed. Ready? Guaranteed. Great news. A um, little surprise for you. Thank you. No, uh -oh. no, don't be like that. Be of yourself. Thanks. Yes? Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. May I just have your uh, attention for 30 seconds, please? How was lunch? Delicious. The city's on a high on the back of the Stanley Cup. <laughs> we have a big surprise here. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sean Thornton. <laughs> I said he had a surprise. I really had no idea. That was awesome. Awesome, Bruce. You guys helping us get where we are. I'd like to give you the awesome. jersey to put up in here. So thank you very much. I seen Thornton. It's like he's always a fighter. Comes back. It felt good to see somebody like that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. The biggest thing I learned from Chef Ramsey is persistence. But the most I learned is that he really did emphasize, you know, having people around that love you and family. <laughs> I'll, send this jacket. I'll send you another one. Work it out. Thank you for building my confidence and for helping me in my business. So nice to see them smiling again. And just like their beloved Bruins, if Frank and Anthony continue working together as a team, Davide is on track to become a big winner. Providence, Rhode Island, great little city. Lots of cool restaurants and a phenomenal art scene. But honestly, I spent so much time there with a throbbing headache named Abby. I just want an answer. It is impossible for the prize to be ice cold. Abby owned and ran down city. Problem was, she was running it into the ground. As long as you work for me, you do it my way, enough said. Her employees didn't respect her. Abby acts like... Whatever, don't argue. Corella DeVille. <laughs> and her partner, Rico, he couldn't get a word in edgewise. All I think about is why people are not coming to my restaurant. Down City was bleeding money. Abby and Rico were in debt to the tune of a million dollars. We've got all these bills to pay this weekend. That's the stack. When I first arrived, Abby was actually quite pleasant. Hello. Hello, Chef Ramsay. How are you? Welcome to Down City. Nice to meet you. Likewise. My pleasure. For five seconds. And on a scale of one to 10, mark the food. What would you say? Where are we? It's a 10. Wow. It's wow, wow, wow. Yes. Perfect. I'm starving because the room service next door was shocking. We do the room service for that hotel. What was the problem? Crab cakes that were stone cold in the center. It was just like this ball of mush. Disgusting. That's impossible. Like, can you say denial? I think you're one of those customers that I would fire immediately. Now, obviously, I didn't think the food was going to be a 10. But what Abby served me, shocking. Mm, what do you think? Ah, soggy, chewy, disgusting calamari. What do you say about it? Just spit the calamari back out. <laughs> <laughs> this is a party in your mouth. I'm taking it. That was one party you didn't want to attend. It wasn't a party in my mouth. It was like a funeral in my mouth. A funeral? <laughs> yeah. Well, it kind of does look like something died. It was so clear that Abby was bloody delusional. And it was time for me to give her a big wake-up call. How can I fix it when you stand there in front of your team, rating you and your restaurant and your food, 10 out of 10, dreamer? I don't, I don't think it's as I bad as you say it's I it can't is. Stop being in denial. Wake up and admit it's shit. No surprise, that night's dinner service was a big disaster. And I mean disaster. This needs to be cooked a little more. Can we just 86 this special? Every single one of them has been sent back. I'd seen enough, so I decided to sneak away and have a quick look round the fridges. Oh, this is gross down here. Holy crap. I was totally shocked. I led Abby and Rico straight downstairs. The place is a filthy mess. Look, what is that? Lamb bones? And who's organizing this? And that's when all hell broke loose. You're being a fucking asshole. This wasn't like this. Hold on it a minute. It wasn't like this. I don't run a kitchen like this. Hold on a minute. You're calling me a fucking asshole? I am. You stuck up, precious little bitch. Let me tell you oh something. Oh, boy. Here we go. Listen to me. I'm not going to listen to you. You're in denial. I'm not in denial. Yes, you are. I'm not in denial. Yes, you are. I'm going to accept it. Fuck there, you. You'll walk out again. I am. Fuck you. There you go. Flip the bird. You are insane. You are insane. Yeah, blame me all you want. These excuses that you're insane. I'm insane. You're insane. You can't even be fucking You're fucking, fucking insane. I don't even perfect. talk to my staff like this. You're Why don't you get the fuck out of my restaurant? Want me to go? I would love you to go. I will get go. Get the fuck out of my I restaurant, go. please. You are so okay. in denial. Okay. You need therapy. 
You're a disgrace to this industry. Oh, you get out of my restaurant. You still here? Not now, guys. Please, please, please. Fuck him. I was pissed. That has never, ever happened to me before. Excuse me? They called me. Is he, he's coming back tonight, isn't he? I don't give a fuck where he goes. He can go to hell for all I care. Chef Ramsay. Then Rigo came out and begged me to walk back in those doors. Honestly, she's got to start listening. I, I know, I, and I don't know how to make her do it. I really, I don't know. You want me to leave? I'm out of here. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Tomorrow we need to start being honest and open. I agree. I want you to help me get this restaurant to where I need it to be. The next morning, I held a staff meeting, which they'd never had before, and got them to ask Abby some serious questions. She had no choice but to listen to the team, and she was being exposed. It was so important. Abby, why do you not allow anyone to express their opinions without it being seen as a personal attack to you? Since I bought this restaurant, I became a defensive bitch. Wow, is this the same person? A new Abby. I felt really encouraged. Immediately, we got to revamping Down City's menu. The appetizers, goat cheese truffle dip, honey spiced chicken wings, meatball sliders, delicious. Wow. Now we can have a real party in our mouth, Abby. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Oh my God, that's unbelievable. <laughs> oh my God, this is like my... <laughs> I've never seen Abby this emotional, like, she does have a heart in there. She does have a soul. It's amazing. <laughs> now we just got to make it work. Yep. Relaunch night. We are going to rock this town tonight. Let's go. Let's go. I invited a special guest, blogger Stacy Place. She has 10,000 followers. She blogs tomorrow. We're 10,000 potential customers. Back up. The night started off well. Right now, in the window, I need that fish and chip. I need that slider. Slider's up, chef. Jimmy, keep it going, yeah? Frise salad on the fly. But it didn't take long for Abby to go back to their old ways. Jimmy, did you call the calamari for table 30? I just did. Oh. I need four soups and one chowder up in the line, please. That's incorrect. The kitchen fell behind, and it was relaunch night, and it felt like it was all going up in flames. She just tweeted, waiting for appetizers, getting hungry. OK, this is not bullshit now. Menu's there, chefs are there, I need you there. Come on. All right, okay. please. Listen, Jimmy, you're already blogging that they're waiting too long for food. Let's get this food out. All right, how long on a solo truffle dip? Urgently, please. With Abby cool, calm, and in control, the kitchen got back on track. Jimmy, what's up? 37, did you fire? I did fire. Good. Abby, read that discreetly. So, Truffle dip, amazing, yes? Yeah. Come on, keep it going, yes? This looks amazing. Yeah. Really yeah. A lot better than the last time, right? Yeah. Jimmy, it was awesome. Thank you. Customers love the food. Abby, how do you feel, babe? I feel beyond belief fantastic. Come on in. Give me a hug. You're not going to ask me, I'm going to ask you. That's right, I, Gordon Ramsay, are asking you for a hug. Come here. Huh? Thank you, sweetie. If you wanted bad food served by a very, very angry owner, Down City in Providence was the place. We made a lot of changes. We're about to find out if it paid off. I'm back at Down City. The scene of one of the biggest fights in the history of Kitchen Nightmares. The owner, Abby, wow, what a tough nut to crack. We made a lot of changes. Let's hope they've paid off and she hasn't slipped back to her old ways. Pray to God, please. Hallelujah. Hey, Rico, how are you? Gordon Ramsay. Good to see you. How are you, sir? Good to be back. Are you well? I'm excellent. How are you? You're looking well. Thank you, you too. Oh, this is brilliant. The big question, how is she? <laughs> Oh, let me lead you to her. Yeah, do I need a... You don't need armor, or you don't need anything like that, bulletproof vest, no, you're fine. Okay, you're fine. great. You're fine, I Here think she'll be happy to see you. Okay, I'm anxious for this one. Hey, How are you? Welcome back. You look great. I was so happy that he was here because I knew he was going to love the food. Do you still hate me? <laughs> no, I never hated you. Oh, really? Why don't you get the fuck out of my restaurant? Want me to go? I would love you to go. I will go. Get the fuck out of my I restaurant, please. Can I stay today, or are you going to kick me out? 
We'll see. Oh, we'll, we'll see. see. OK, great. <laughs> uh, well, uh, need I ask, um, business is looking good. Just look at it. Everyone's happy. Everyone's great. Since Gordon was here last, business has improved at least 30 30%, and that's huge in this economic environment. How have you changed? I don't come in the restaurant anymore and say, OK, this is what we're going to do. It's my way or the highway. That Abby is gone. I think the staff is going completely batshit crazy because I am so calm and I don't run around yelling and screaming at them individually anymore. Um, Food-wise, last time you rated the food, you gave it a 10. How are the ratings now? I mean, I'm, I'm trying to find out. It's a 10. And you mean it this time? I'm not in denial. <laughs> You'll see. Hey, look at you. Excuse me. Hey, who's hey, here? How How's are you? Going? Are you well? I'm doing all right. How are you? Good to see you. Jimmy has impressed the hell out of me with his work ethic. That kid would rather be working than doing anything. Abby rates at 10. How would you rate your food now from 1 to 10? A 10 out of 10. A 10 out of 10. And she's changed. Tonight was the worst shit show I've ever seen. Ever, ever, ever seen. For the better. How's your work relationship with her? Is she giving you more leeway? Can you become the chef? Yeah. Yeah? Jimmy is absolutely wonderful. And his dynamic with Abby has, has melded into a really nice relationship. There you go. Good to see you, Jimmy. You too. I'm dying to see downstairs. <laughs> Our famous place, you know, where you and I really what get off. What happened downstairs? Well, I don't remember that. Take me down there again, please. I don't know what that is. What is that? What, you lost the words? The place is a filthy mess. Look. What is that? You're being a fucking asshole. This wasn't like this. Hold on it a wasn't like this. You're calling me a fucking asshole? I am. You stuck up, precious little bitch. Let me tell you oh something. Oh, boy. Shall we? Please. Should I prepare myself? Holy mackerel. Wow. What do you think? Well, bloody hell. It's organized, it's structured, and it all looks incredible. <laughs> Let's get out of here. We've just been working so hard to keep the standards up that he left us with. I've got a question for you. What's up? On my last visit here, you told me. You're a disgrace to this industry. I take it back. Are you taking it back? I take it back. back. Oh. It just came out. Sometimes I don't have a filter. How you doing? Good to see you. Good Likewise. To see Good to see you, too. How are you, buddy? Good, good. How are you? Well, what's happened? It's like the sort of we've, 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 we've changed. She goes up to our tables all the time now. She's very interactive with the customers. You know, she's looking for positive and the ne negative feedback. Okay. okay, great. It's good to see you, man. Good to see you. No, thanks. Wow. That looks great. That's a steak. That's some of the sausage. Mind if I do a bite of that one? Absolutely. It's so good. That's delicious. To get Gordon Ramsay's seal of approval, I mean, it really means everything to me. Have you embraced the word change? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no pinky cross. Put your right hand up and swear to God, I, Abby. I, Abby. I've embraced. I've embraced. Change. Change. Forever. Forever. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so with the success of the business, has it brought you two together in terms of as a proper partnership? What's the working relationship now like? I sense a little tension between you two. Instead of the um, volcano erupting on the employees, it erupts on me. Really? No. You know, like what she was told on Friday, so she told me to fuck off. <laughs> You know, she told you to fuck off. <laughs> Abby, there's me thinking that you're a complete change, turnaround, amazing woman, and you slip back into your old ways. No, I didn't. We're like an old married couple. You're in business together. You shouldn't turn to fuck off. He's your partner. You're right. You're absolutely right. Don't tell him to fuck off again. In fact, I'd like to apologize. I love you, Rico. I'm sorry. I've been waiting for since Friday. That's it. It's very simple. I wish you did it Friday night. There isn't anyone I would ever do this with besides Abby. Her heart and soul are there 110% of the time. Listen, I'm pleased. Good job. Thank, Thank you. Both. Thank you. Now, as always, good to see you. Um, take care. Thank you very and much. Take care of her, would you please, Jess? I think what Abby learned from Chef Ramsay yeah. was accept criticism. Because accepting criticism and dealing with it makes you stronger. Come here, Napoleon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Great to see you. Come back again. I want to thank him. He was a lifesaver, because Down City is my life. 
I really like him a lot. He's a cool guy. I don't need to tell you, but it's been a rough couple of years for all business owners. So for Davide, Classic America and Down City to be thriving in this environment is a tribute to all their hard work. I am so proud of them all. Good night.